So this episode review is coming out later, of course, than I would rather than I would rather come out. But I want to go ahead and apologize really quick at the beginning of the video because uh, I, 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 my old chair basically fucking broke and I can't really sit on it properly like how I used to be able to. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. I, I guess it's not fixable. And I have to order a new chair. I have to order a, a new fucking chair. It's gonna have to cost. It's gonna cost like about a couple hundred dollars, uh, depending on the type of chair I get, of course. But um, it's it's fine. I'm gonna have to wait um, a couple days, maybe like a week or so, because we're they're gonna deliver it because we're gonna order it online and stuff. But right now I'm using this old fucking rickety ass lawn chair, and, and I have it like just in my room, and it creaks a lot and it's loud. So I, I'm sorry if you hear it in the fucking mic, but regardless, um, we're here and we're here to talk about Persona 5. And of course, uh, this episode does what I immediately thought it was going to do, which was basically set up for um, Medjed and Futaba Sakura. And Futaba Sakura, I'm going to go ahead and explain briefly on her a little bit. Basically, her backstory is that he is, or she is the adopted daughter of Sojiro Sakura. And Sojiro is the guy who owns the flock and is, you know, basically giving Ren, the main character, a place to stay for the time being as he's in probation. So the episode starts off, we have this fucking Daily Bugle wannabe JJ motherfucker wannabe ass. He's like, talking to someone on the phone uh it's not obvious as to who it could be but if you played the game or you kind of just like know stuff about you know persona 5 then you might know who it could be but for some reason i don't think it's the person that i think it's gonna be or i think it is but regardless the episode continues on they played the intro I, i'm not sure if i talked about the new opening um in the last episode or whenever they started using it but i do like it i like the song uh animation wise it looks really good and uh, it's fun to watch uh, i hope you enjoy it too but the episode continues on and basically after all the stuff with kanashiro happened uh ren and everyone else of uh, the phantom thieves they decide to go ahead and celebrate and the way that they're going to celebrate is they're going to go to a fireworks show that they had uh, that was planned out for everybody to attend to. And uh, An Makoto and Yusuke are in, are, are in kimonos. And so are a lot of other people. You can see people in the background. They're wearing kimonos. And there are also other people who aren't wearing kimonos. But they're just wearing like regular outfits. Which is fine. But I remember in the game. They were talking about. Uh, if they had known that they were going to wear kimonos. Ren and Ryuji would have done it too. Probably not Ryuji, but still. So Ren and Ryuji aren't wearing Komodos, but they're there and they're trying to watch the fireworks. But uh, there are, there's a whole crowd there. Everyone's there watching the fireworks. And then it starts raining. Fireworks show get, gets completely fucking rained out. Uh, they give us a f fan service-y uh, scene in the episode where her kimono is kind of soaked and she lifts the bottom part up so she can like twist the fucking kimono and like get most of the water out and you can see like her legs and shit and it's like getting up to like her her lady like area right and so because obviously there are three other guys there makoto's like yo what are you doing you might want to look at those are fucking assholes over there who might be looking at you she looks at over she looks over at them and they're just trying to completely avoid all eye contact in, in general. Ryuji even points out that's pretty uncomfortable, so it's like, why even do it in the first place? So they go inside the building, and it's completely crowded. Uh, they start talking about uh, about the, everything that they did with Kanashiro and how Ryuji is kind of annoyed because, he, because the Phantom Thieves are getting all this fame, but that fame isn't really derogatorily like, towards him. It's not really 
you know, given towards him because they don't know that he's one of the Phantom Thieves. And even then, the Phantom Thieves are seen as fucking criminals by most of the police. So, the next scene immediately afterwards is Sojuro. He's in LeBlanc. And Sainijima, Makoto's sister, is there. And it kind of seems like uh, she's blackmailing him. Now, we don't really know... Excuse me. We don't really know what it is until a little bit later on towards the later half of the episode. The later second half, actually. I have gas in my chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, there's a, there's a TV in the background. And the TV is like... There's like this reporter lady. And she's explaining that uh, this hacker group known, known as Medjed is... You know, they basically relayed out a message as a declaration of war... Um, you know, towards the Phantom Thieves, and they're basically saying, like, oh, if you don't do, if you don't do what we ask you to do, uh, you know, we're gonna, like, do this and that, and whatever, whatever, right? More information is obviously given out towards, uh, Ren and the others, you know, those who are obviously the Phantom Thieves. Uh, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Uh, they have no idea what they want to do. Uh, they kind of just ignore it for a little bit, but then... Uh, a whole bunch of weird stuff starts happening. Like, Ren, he's in his classroom, and everybody else's phone just randomly goes off. Everyone else's phone in the classroom just goes off, uh, but Ren's, and Ren is pretty much confused by that. And then he goes to, like, the doctor ladies, like, uh, like, like, clinic, clinical area, and, uh, you know, I didn't really get, like, the whole point of it. Besides, like, what's what's going to happen in the immediate next scene when he goes out into, like, the the little, like, waiting room. But I, I like I liked how they gave uh, audiences a little bit of fan service there. Because for some reason, uh, because of the game and stuff, you can uh, level up your confidant with, uh, with Tay. That's her name. Uh, you know, the clinical lady, the doctor. And she can be... She's basically one of the waifus in the game, right? And I guess they decided to get a little bit of fan service there because they they have the voice actress point out that uh, she's noticed that Ren has becoming a little bit more tone, uh, meaning that he's you know healthy and he's having and he's doing and he's working out basically, and that's probably all because of like the Phantom Thief's like work that he does in Mementos. He starts getting a whole bunch of messages from someone uh, called Alibaba. And Alibaba is um, a hacker who's secretly Futaba, uh, but of course the characters don't know that. And basically, she's you know sending him a message, and he can't send messages back. But he's sending uh, she's sending messages to him, basically saying, "I want you to seal this person's heart, and if you do that, I'm gonna help you out with Medjed, whatever, whatever." Right? So obviously, everyone is like confused, and they have no idea. Like, how this person even knows, like, all this information about them, right? It seems really confusing. They don't understand how it happened. But, of course, you know, they come up with, you know, the idea of they probably... The hacker has probably gone through, you know, their phone logs and has looked at their previous conversations through text messages, text messages, of course, right? They have a little bit of, like, a pervy scene with Ryuji where he's like, Oh, I gotta delete stuff off my phone. And even Ana points out... Uh, that sounds like really pervy or whatever, right? I thought it was funny. It gave me a little bit of a quick laugh and just thought it was hilarious. But the episode continues on. Uh, Alibaba is, you know, talking to them. And, you know, they they want to, you know, get all this stuff situated with Medjed, you know, completely, completely, they want to be completely done with, right? They want to be done with this shit, but, uh, but first, in order to even get any any assistance in this bullshit, they have to do whatever Alibaba wants them to do, which is, you know, basically go and change the heart of Futaba Sakura. And as I explained earlier, who Futaba Sakura is, Futaba Sakura is the adopted daughter of Sojuro Sakura. And the same person who's Futaba Sakura is Alibaba. And she's, you know, the super crazy hacker girl, whatever, right? And so they're trying to get a name. They get a name... Uh, and then they they need more information, right? They need a place. Uh, they need a place, right? Like, for example, like a school. 
And then they need, you know, another, like, adjective, I think, is the proper word I should fucking use. I actually don't know. Uh, basically, they need another word of, you know, basically what the person sees, you know, the school as. Like, like for Kamashita, uh, it was Kamashita, and then school, and then it was castle. Because he sees, because K- K- Kamashita saw the school as his castle. So, the, ba- they basically need... You know more information on Futaba Sakura, but they basically get none of it. Uh, Alibaba's trying not to get fucking caught, and so they basically you know cut off the deal. Alibaba cuts off the deal, and they're not doing anything, right? Um, they start continuing to talk about whether or not they want to like continue with this or whatnot, right? Ren actually overhears conversations about Sai and Sojuro, and basically uh, she wants to take him into into court for, you know, potential abuse that could be happening, right? So, of course, because Ren hears all this bullshit, you know, he doesn't honestly believe that. He doesn't believe that. And, you know, they start talking through, like, messages and stuff because they think that's fine, I guess, whatever, right? So, then it's like, they ask if, they ask Ren if he seems the type of person to do that. And, Ren says he doesn't believe that he would do anything like that. That seems completely out of character. And everyone agrees, you know, so they believe that Sojuro has done nothing wrong and they need to figure out who Alibaba is, how to get to Futaba's heart. And so basically they're going after Futaba Sakura and they're going to change her heart, I guess. So they, you know, kind of get the gist of potentially who this person is, who's Alibaba is Futaba Sakura, and they're trying to you know, do something about it, right? This motherfucker, Alibaba, creates a fucking, a whole fucking blackout in the middle of Shibuya City, near the Shibuya Station. I'm like, what the fuck? So basically, that's just ba- that's basically Medjed, quote unquote, saying if they don't do what we tell them to do, we're gonna give out their information about who the Phantom Thieves are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they're gonna do it, and they're gonna try to figure out. Uh, you know, and then they finally kind of figure out that the same person who's Alibaba is potentially Futaba Sakura. They go to Sojuro's house. Uh, they walk in, and they start. It starts getting a little bit like a, a little bit creepy for the characters, and then all of a sudden the power goes out. The power goes out. Makoto's freaked out. She's holding on to fucking Ren. All of a sudden, there's like footsteps coming up behind them. And it's starting to get, like, really creepy because it seems like it's a fucking ghost girl from, from the fucking ring, uh, from the fucking TV and shit. Makoto <laughs> turns around. I don't know why. After I saw this, it, it made me laugh. It wasn't really creepy. It was just fucking hilarious because she turns around. It's, like, super creepy. Lightning flashes, and then you can see light reflecting from the lightning towards uh, her glasses. Right, it, Futaba's just standing there in the hallway, sees Makoto. Makoto turns around, she screams, and then Futaba fucking screams, and then the fucking whole scene just ends, and it cuts to black, and then the episode is fucking over. It it made me laugh so fucking hard. I I wasn't expecting that to happen, or rather, I knew it was gonna happen because I played the fucking game, but I didn't I didn't think it was gonna happen like the way it did. For some reason, I just thought that was the funniest fucking shit in the world. <laughs> this just, it's just this fucking like four foot eleven like little fucking girl, right? It's just like standing in the fucking hallway, and then Makoto just fucking screams her fucking ass off, and then Futaba does the exact same fucking thing, right? And you know, there's an explanation for that, and it's mostly due because. Futaba is kind of like a kind of an introvert she doesn't really like to go outside often and obviously you learn more about the reasoning why she doesn't like to go outside too often because of her backstory but uh but you know she's she's not used to being around people so of course when she sees people in her fucking house she has she obviously fucking immediately screams but I just thought it was hilarious I don't know why I thought it was so funny but it was and that's basically the end of the episode. The the, uh, the episode ends. It was supposed to be creepy. I thought it was hilarious. I don't know why, but it fucking was. Anyways, um, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Uh, if you did enjoy watching, uh, be sure to leave a like. And if you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos just like this. 
Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.